Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another Q&A. It's been a couple of months, maybe. I know I did quite a few during the whole lockdown thing, and I haven't done one at least for two months. So I thought, why not? And you've probably noticed it's a little bit different uh, in the setup right now. Uh, I've moved my office around. We're going to have a racing sim set up on my left. So I'll be doing some F1 streams with a proper kind of cockpit simulator. It's going to be fun. So make sure you follow me on Twitch. So I'll be live streaming other games until then. So the link is in the description if you want to go ahead and follow me. But yeah, I haven't finished setting up yet. I haven't got things hung up on the wall yet. It's a bit of a mess. Um, but for now, it doesn't really matter. We're going to jump into this Q&A. All the questions have come in from people in my Discord. So if you want to get into the Discord, all you have to do is subscribe on my Twitch and you can join the uh, the community there, the official MGH United Discord. Or you can pledge on Patreon if you want to support me. There is a link down below. But let's get into the first question coming in from, from Ben. What was your most enjoyable moment as an Arsenal fan? Now... It's quite fresh right now, and that is the FA Cup win, of course, that happened on August 1st. But that's not the best memory or best moment of all time for me, obviously, because, you know, we've won quite a few FA Cups since I was born. But, uh, yeah, I really do need to think about this one because there's been a few moments, you know, when we when we drew with Leicester at Highbury on the final day of the Invincible season. You know, I was really, really nervous. We actually conceded first in that game and I thought, no, there's no way we're throwing away an unbeaten season. And, and bear in mind, I was 10 when this happened. Um, I was watching it with a couple of friends. So yeah, it was that was a good moment, winning that. Um, I'm just thinking now of some of the worst moments. You know, when, when we got to the Champions League final against Barcelona, layman red card. Oh my God. And yeah, we got we got shafted in that game. Would have been amazing to win the Champions League. That probably would have been what I would have talked about now, being the best moment, having won the Champions League. But I think, honestly, it might it might be the FA Cup in 2015. It was a long time since we got a trophy. It was at Wembley. Um, oh, what, what an incredible game. I was in London at the time, and I watched it in a pub. Uh, with Chris MD and a few other people. It was it was crazy. What a day. That might go down as the best moment just because it had been so long since we won a trophy. And um, yeah, that was good to get the FA Cup win then. The next question comes in from Simon. He says, what is your favourite FIFA? Bit of a tough one, this, because FIFA 13 is pretty amazing for me in the past. It, it was probably the first FIFA where I genuinely kind of um, exploded on YouTube a little bit at least. Uh, I was able to do quite well that year and it was a good game. FIFA 13 Arsenal career mode. Oh, that was amazing. Uh, I thought FIFA 16, I think it was, was it 16? It might have been 17 actually. Th those two games weren't too bad in terms of career mode. I'm not really talking about ultimate team experience, but uh, I can't talk too much about the new game. But what I will say is having played it quite a lot now um, behind the scenes and stuff, I genuinely think this has a chance to be the best career mode experience we've had. So I'm super excited for FIFA 21. Uh, it can't really be the answer to your question, Simon. So I'll go with FIFA 13. But honestly, FIFA 21 is looking good. Oof, that's a tough one. That's a really tough question coming in from McKay George. He says, if there was one change you could make to football, what would it be and why? Um, gosh, I I've got to be honest. I'm not really a big fan of VAR as it is right now in the game. I think... It's definitely here to stay and it will do some good. And in the long term, it will be a, a good thing that we've added it. But I just, I can't get behind it in its current form. It's too slow. It ruins half of the excitement of football. You know, when you score, when your team scores and you're just thinking, wait, is it a goal though? And you've got to wait. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. Um, but I, I guess there's not much you can do about it. VAR needs to be in the game for... For fairness, uh, I, it's, it's a tough one. It's a really good question. If we're talking outside of VAR, um, oh, it's, it's really tough. This is going to be very controversial, but I genuinely wouldn't mind if it was 12v12. I would like to see more two up top formations. Um, if you're playing two strikers, you have to pretty much take away a defender or a midfielder. What if we could see 4-4-3? Four, four, Oh my god, that would be incredible. Maybe just for a season, just to see how it goes. But imagine 12v12. 
Would that be good? Or what if the goals were slightly bigger so you see more goals? I, I don't know. That This is a question that I could spend days upon, days and days upon days just thinking about new ideas. I think off the top of my head, though, I wouldn't mind to see an extra player for each team. It would just completely change the way football is. It'd be much more attacking, but also much more defensive as well. It would be so much harder to make space. Um, probably isn't a good idea, actually. So... I don't know. I haven't got a clear one in my head. Now, a question coming in from one of my mods, my good friend Lewis, or Brapstacle as he likes to be called. What has been your biggest challenge in making YouTube your career? Again, really tough question because there's quite a few challenges that, that go on behind the scenes. A lot of people just think that YouTube is this incredible, heavenly job. There's no downsides to it. When actually, whilst it's a fantastic thing you can do and make money playing games and making videos and just entertaining people, that's that's obviously a great thing. And the freedom it gives you to, to work from home and, and take time off when you want it, although that comes with its own negatives. But um, it's not all sunshine and flowers. It, it is actually sometimes quite difficult. And there have been moments throughout the 10 and a half years that I've been doing this now where I've been close to or at least just not enjoying the moment, but close to maybe stopping. Um, I've never got to the point where it's like, right, I'm done. But I, th there has been a few times where I've just thought to myself, do you know what? I actually kind of just want a normal, a normal job. Um, but then when I actually think about it, there are too many positives that I don't want to give away or give up, I should say. So whilst most of the time this YouTube thing is incredible, it's like a dream job, there are some tough things. I think the biggest challenge... For me, at least, and it might not be the same for other YouTubers, but it is self-motivation. There is no one telling you what to do, when to do it. There is no schedule unless you come up with one, come up with one yourself, but there's no one enforcing it other than yourself. You know, you've got to make every decision yourself. If you don't have a team behind you, I, d I don't have a team behind me. Everything is is me. Everything you see on this channel is me. All the thumbnails, all the graphics, all the videos, all the everything comes from me. And I'm the one who's got to self-motivate. I've got to wake up in the morning and make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to have a successful time at this. There are days where I'm lazy. There are days where I'm doing too much work. There are times when I think I should be doing way better than I'm doing. There are videos I finish and just think, wow, that's not good enough. There are videos where I think I've put too much time into this and I've wasted opportunities to do this. There is plenty of occasions where I want to work with a company and can't, or the other way around, a company wants to work with me, but I really don't like them. There's lots of... Yeah, it can be quite complicated, but for me, the self-motivation is the toughest thing. It is unbelievably difficult for every single day of the year, pretty much, to have something on your mind that you've constantly got to keep going. I'm working every day. I don't really take many days off. If I'm taking a day off, I'm still thinking about the video that I'm making tomorrow, or I'm still getting a bit of gameplay, or I'm still editing a little bit. I don't really have a weekend. I don't really take much time off without thinking about it. The only time I can think of recently where I genuinely had a week of just not even thinking about it was when I got married last year and went for a week in Sweden with Ellen. I just didn't do anything. I had my videos ready to go. I didn't really check the comments. I just, I shut down for a week and it was weird. I'm not sure I actually enjoyed it as much as I thought I would. I love what I do. I, I love making videos, um, but there are some days where motivating yourself uh, is really difficult. You might just think, but it's not hard, Matt. You just put on your PlayStation or load up a PC game and just record yourself. But trust me, any task, no matter how much fun you have doing it, gets tiresome. It gets very repetitive. This this job, if you call it that, or this hobby that makes money, as I like to call it, um, is it, it, it can get very, very boring. And you're very lonely. You know, I spend a lot of time on my own doing these things. So yeah, I've probably gone on a little bit too long on this question, but it's it's a good one. I'd say motivating yourself, you know, even if it's for a normal job is very important. But when you've got, let's say, a nine to five uh, job at a desk somewhere, like you, you've got a boss, you know, you've got a schedule, you have to be in at nine, you have to be gone by five. I don't have any of that. So whilst that's a good thing, it's also a very tough thing because I've got to force myself. When I'm having a bit of fun playing a different game, I've got to force myself to then go and edit some FIFA or play FIFA or talk over FIFA. And it's just sometimes a little bit difficult, but um, I can't complain. I really can't complain. It's one of the reasons this lockdown and, and this pandemic period hasn't really affected me too much because I'm, I'm just still doing me. I'm still doing what I do. Good question, Lewis. Thank you. Okay, I see you, Undercover Cop Hawaii. I see you trying to get me in trouble here. Um, it's an interesting question because 
there's breaking the law and then there's breaking the law, like murdering someone. But there's little things that maybe I've done throughout my life which are technically against the law, but everyone does it. Or, you know, speeding, for example. I've definitely, I've definitely been speeding in my car. I've never been caught. I've never had a speeding ticket, but I have definitely gone faster than I should have in, at times. But I don't think that really counts to this question. So there is one thing I know I did that was definitely breaking the law. And a lot of people might be a bit shocked to know this. I don't know, but I stole from Tesco. <laughs> Okay, wait, before you all go crazy, it's not what you think. It's not like I walked in, grabbed a bag full of stuff and walked out. It's it's not like that. So you know the self-scan things? You, you scan it yourself, put it in the in the bag and weigh it, and then you pay. Um, I may have got two chocolate bars, scanned one, and, and then left, maybe, and paid for one instead of both. I'm not going to claim it was an accident. Um, what happened was I forgot to do the second one, but I forgot during I was still doing it. I hadn't paid yet. And I kind of just thought, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I did do a naughty thing. I may have got an extra chocolate bar. This was years ago. And to this day, I still feel a little bit bad about it. I, I don't know what happened. I'm not like that. I just It just happened. I, I kind of realized that I could easily get away with an extra chocolate bar. It's like an extra 60p. Oh, my God. But yeah, I, I guess that counts as breaking the law. But I know some of you guys are going to just say, what? That is nothing. I've done this. I've done this. I've buried my dad. And yeah, don't worry. I'm not I'm not really someone that's going to break the law. Um, but there's a little story for you. Man, these questions are so good. Thank you guys in the Discord. Uh, Dan says, has the pandemic changed your views on anything in life and made you realize something you took for granted? 100%. Yes. And the, the answer is family. Family, family, family. Now, I've been guilty, especially over the last few years, of maybe not spending enough time with my family. I, I just, I'm doing my thing. I'm just doing my work and we maybe see each other every few weeks. And what I've realized throughout the pandemic is there was a time in my life where I would go home every week, every Friday night and have a meal with my parents and stuff. But they have split up over the last few years. That caused a little bit of, of tension within the family, I guess. Um, and I found myself not going over to see my dad and my mum separately as much as I probably should. So for sure, during this pandemic, as soon as you've got that opportunity to go and visit your family taking away, I, I realised very quickly, wow, I, I do take that for granted. I love being able to just call up my mum and say, hey, do you want some dinner tonight? I'll come over, I'll bring some KFC or maybe we'll cook something. Like, I, I kind of feel like I've definitely taken that for granted. Family's everything. If you haven't got your family in life, or at least friends, if you've lost most of your family, whatever the case may be, there's not much in it. Everything for me in life is health, family and happiness really i mean that that's without any of those three things you're not really i guess wealth comes into it as well if you've got no money it's also very tough to live in this day and age but the main things family comes first man and um that's definitely something that i've taken for granted not on purpose i've only just realized now you know i'm not blaming the separation of my parents but i'm certainly guilty of maybe not making the effort enough and um that's something i definitely I want to improve in because I used to go to my mum and dad's all the time um, with Ellen. We'd go over for meals and stuff. And now we're not. We're not doing that so much. Things have changed. My dad's busy. My mum's busy. They're separated and they're doing their own thing. And I totally get that. But that is something I need to improve in. So when it's safer, because um, I'm obviously still going over there, but we're, we're distancing. When it's kind of back to normal, I would like to go over there way more often and spend time with my family and, you know, especially go and see my dad some more because he's he's moved away. And yeah, I think that's what I've realized. It's a really good question. I hope that someone watching this video is going to think to themselves, maybe they've done something differently over the, pan the pandemic and realized they've taken something um, for granted, you know, and you can change it. It's not There's nothing wrong with realizing that what you're doing is maybe not ideal and you can change it. Um, the pandemic has definitely been eye-opening in that regard for me. I kind of knew this question would pop up. Um, Will said, who do you think will win the Champions League this year? Now, granted, he actually asked this question a couple of days ago. This was before the latest results. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit late making this video. Sorry, guys. Um, I have said Bayern for the last month or two. I I've since Bayern have won the Bundesliga and I watched them on that crazy run, which they're basically still on, um, I've always thought, yeah, there, there isn't a team in the world right now that can compete with Bayern. And seeing the absolute demolition of Barcelona, there is no doubt in my mind that Barcelona 
just were miles off and that Bayern will, will go on to win. I, I can't see anyone beating Bayern, especially now that Man City are out as well. I think the story of Leon, similar to Ajax not so long ago, it's a great story and I would absolutely love it if Leon could go on to win the competition, but it's not It's not likely. Ajax were never going to win it, I don't think, in the end. And uh, I think this year, Bayern, it's their competition to lose. They're, they are that good. This one is a bit difficult to answer as well because... I don't know, should I say thankfully? I guess I should. You'll, you'll understand in a moment why. I haven't actually had too many occasions when I've been recognised, or if I have been recognised, they haven't really come up to me. Uh, and I say thankfully because I find it a little bit awkward, a little bit difficult. I wouldn't say annoying is the right word. Um, it's a good question, Sol, because when it has happened, and it has, I've definitely been recognised a few times and you know, especially when it's when it's a kid with their parents and the kid's a little bit nervous to come up to me. So they they bring the parent. And yeah, that that can always be a little bit weird. But there are some weird occasions I've been recognized in my doctors. He was sitting in the waiting room and I walked past him. He went, wait, wait, are you MGH? And straight away, I'm like, yeah, but please don't ask me why I'm here. <laughs> it's, it's a bit personal. Thankfully, he didn't. Um, but he said he saw me driving in. He saw my plate. At the time, I had MGH on my plate. Um, that, that, that's a funny story. But thank God he didn't ask me what I was there for. I mean, it's not like I was there for anything embarrassing. But that's the kind of conversation you don't have with a random stranger. Oh, why are you at the doctor's? Just having my butt examined, you know. I, I, I have had some interactions which I would rather didn't happen. But there's also been some occasions where the guy or girl... Actually, have I ever been recognised by a girl? I think maybe once... Um, but there was one guy I met at Blue Water. Uh, you won't, lots of people won't know what Blue Water is. It's, it's a big shopping centre in the UK. I got recognised by a guy there and he was so friendly. He was so cool about it. You know, we took a picture and he, we talked about Arsenal for a little bit and that's great. So I don't have an issue with talking to fans if they are genuinely good at carrying a conversation. I always find myself having to instigate the questions and I, I guess most of the time it's because they don't know what to say, or maybe they're a little bit nervous if they're a kid, or whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, genuinely, I, I don't, I don't mind talking to fans. I don't mind being recognised, but it can be a little bit awkward. So if you ever do see me, um, and I, I do see you looking at me. Okay, I've seen it where they look at me and they're constantly like checking, but they don't really want to come up and say hi. Just, just come and say hi if you really feel like you want to say hi. But obviously, if you don't. That's fine, but just just don't worry about it, man. I'm not going to bite. Um, but yeah, honestly, though, it wouldn't bother me if I never got recognised because it is a bit weird. I don't see myself as... I, I don't even like saying the word, but famous. I, I'm not, okay? I'm not. I'm just a dude that makes FIFA videos, but I do get recognised. I'm getting texted from friends and family members, um, you know, that have bumped into... Oh, this is a great story. Hayley, one of my mods, works at a superstore, uh, a supermarket, and found one of her colleagues was wearing an Arsenal mask and they randomly got talking about Arsenal and then she mentioned oh do you know MGH he's like yeah I watch him all the time and all of a sudden I'm connected to this guy and he, he's he's saying oh Hayley passed on your your uh, Twitter I'm, I'm saying I want to say hi and it, it, it's crazy people out there just know who I am and I, I will never get used to that um, really nice guy. It, it's cool. It's definitely cool, but it can be damn awkward. Okay, and to wrap this Q&A up, we've got one last question coming in from Caleb. And by the way, I'm sorry if I didn't get all your questions in, by the way. So maybe next time. Um, what's been the most exciting moment in your life? This is hilarious because honestly, so many people are going to think this is pathetic, but the best and most exciting moment in my life, except from meeting Ellen or, um, you know, stuff that everyone would talk about normally. But outside of that, it was finishing school. Honestly, the day I walked home after the last day of secondary school, I was so excited for it to be over. I, I think I've mentioned it before, but I hated school. I found it very difficult. I didn't like being in classrooms. You know, I had a great group of friends and outside of the classroom, we were playing football and yeah, that, that's fine. But I don't like being in classrooms. I felt trapped. I had massive anxiety in school of just being ill. I, I was a massive germaphobe. I still am to this day, to be fair. Um, I was diagnosed with diabetes towards the last two years of school, so that made things difficult. And just in general, especially being a type 1 diabetic, it was so difficult. That moment when I finished that last day and I was walking home and I've got, I have a really steep hill that I used to walk up. And normally, like halfway up, you're like, God, is this hill over yet? I didn't want it to be over. 
I wanted to feel that feeling for so much longer, knowing that I would never have to put on that damn school uniform again, and I would never have to set foot in that school again. It is still, to, to this day, one of the best moments, because the relaxation I felt, the feeling of just never needing to go through any of that again, is quite sad, but to me it was massive, and... I went on to do college for two years, which was a bit marginally better. It was a bit better. Um, but in general, just finishing school, it just meant that that chapter was over. And it was it was all about what I want to be and what I want to become. And, you know, whether I was going to go straight into work or go into college and go to uni, which I didn't go. I didn't go to uni in the end. Um, somehow stumbled across this whole YouTube thing. But um, that honestly goes down as probably the most exciting moment in my life outside of getting married and meeting Ellen and... Uh, there's there's a few other things like getting my first motorbike and those those are a bit boring answers though aren't they but um guys that is going to be the end of the Q&A I want to say a massive thank you to the guys in the discord for uh, giving me such great questions I think this might be the best one yet uh, again apologies for the rubbish setup I will fix all this we're going to get the Arsenal logo badge thing back up on the wall I've actually got it over here it's just not plugged in at the moment um, and I'm really excited to get the racing sim set up done. It's going to take probably a couple of weeks because delivery of items. Whoo, it's pretty bad right now during the pandemic. So be patient. F1 is coming back. Um, but for now, please do follow me on Twitch, guys. I haven't streamed over the last few days because it's been so damn hot in the UK. But we're going to be coming back with some F1 and I'll use the controller for a bit. And some Call of Duty and some... Red Dead Redemption and just cool games, stuff like that. But um, FM, maybe, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do drop a like rating and I will see you in the next one. Another Q&A in a couple of weeks, I guess. Something like that. Um, and a new career mode at some point, I guess.